want to talk about the batteries that we're going to use on our boat and a little bit about why we chose them. You know, batteries is a hot topic these days, especially when it comes to running like boats and sailboats and stuff like that. And these are actually a kind of a lead acid battery, but they're built differently than your standard car battery. They actually have a fiberglass or, or glass plates inside of them somehow that are saturated with the uh, electrolyte and stuff so they operate a little differently so they're a much better quality battery than what comes in your car and the other nice thing about them is that they're non spillable so I can actually uh, lay these down on their side to hook them together if I want and I don't have to worry about anything leaking out of them these batteries are going to accept a full charge a lot longer in their life than a standard lead acid battery would. They are also uh, able to be discharged uh, deeper and further than a standard lead acid battery. Typically uh, a lead acid battery it's it's not good for it to go below 50 percent at all ever in its life. Uh, these you can discharge all the way down to a hundred percent. Not all the time um, it's recommended that you don't do it too often and if you do that to quickly recharge them back up but they are designed to be able to handle that and they also will recharge quicker and faster up to like 25 percent faster than most of your lead acid batteries as well now the AGMs are actually more expensive than your lead acid batteries but they're not hugely more expensive the next step up is the life pose that is definitely a better system overall, but the cost to go from these AGMs up to the life pose for us, these we've spent $7,000 on. As I figured it out, we would be upwards of $24,000 to go to 21 to 24,000 to go with life pose having the exact same configuration we have here. Now here's one of the big differences between life pose and AGMs. Your life pose uh, charge faster to that 100% charge, so they're a little cheaper to charge overall if you're using like a generator and stuff. They will charge faster. You can also discharge the life pose a lot more down than you can these without damage them as well. So you actually get a little bit more, uh, should we say, fuel or oomph or push out of a life pose battery than you do an AGM on one charge. They're also able to be recharged a lot more times than an AGM. Over the lifetime, the life pose can be cheaper to purchase if you factor in the life of the battery. The trick is you gotta pay for it all up front. You're paying for it now. And you gain your value in it over time. But dealing with batteries, there's some other problems that can happen you can ruin a battery bank really easy and if you ruin a battery bank you've lost your investment it's gone and one of the ways you ruin that inv that uh, battery bank is by totally discharging it down to zero all the time and not ever charging it all the way back up again now AGMs are a lot more susceptible to that than life pose. Life pose are more resistant to that, but you can still ruin a life pose bank by doing those kinds of things as well. Another thing that can happen is you can just have a failure of a battery. And if you have a failure of one battery that's in a bank of batteries, it has a tendency to, if you don't catch it in time, screw up the entire bank of batteries. For example, if one of these guys develops a short in it and it starts failing to charge and it's failing to like pull its weight in the battery bank, it'll drop all the other batteries down to its level because the batteries want to equalize themselves with each other. And so if I'm not catching that in the right time, uh, one bad battery can ruin a whole bank of batteries. Now on a boat, we have a battery bank. So these batteries are six volt batteries and our motor runs on 48 volts. So I have to create a battery bank using eight of these 
to get up to my 48 volts. And when I do that, I put myself in a position again of if one battery goes bad, it can mess up my whole bank. So we thought when we designed our battery bank, I wasn't willing to risk that I will be able to get a full 15 years out of a battery bank without it somehow getting screwed up or messed up or something happening to that bank. So I thought, well, I'm going to start with the AGMs because they're a better price initially and I should be able to get a good amount of life out of these banks and then maybe our technology will catch up to us to where you know five or six years from now maybe I can switch to something else and the price will have come down and the management technology will have gone up. One of the ways that we're managing our battery banks is that we have purchased some very high quality battery chargers and what they do is they monitor the batteries, they monitor the voltage in and the voltage out and the amperage and how everything's flowing and they measure how much uh, charge to put in the battery through its stage of charge and as that stage of charge begins to change, which it always does in batteries, uh, the battery chargers will monitor that and they will adjust their input to the batteries accordingly so that they don't overcharge the battery or undercharge the battery. They're going to get the maximum out of it and they're all computer control devices. The ones that we're using are uh, made by Delta and it's a, a Delta Quick Charge, Delta Qi Q they call them. Um, most of these batteries are going to run our electric motor. But we also have, uh, I think we have four of these guys that are going to be for our house bank in the boat. They're going to be a 12 volt system and they're going to use four of these batteries to create a 600 amp house volt system. But managing the batteries for an electric motor and the charge and all of that also applies the same way to the house bank. One of the ways that we're going to help our system be able to work more efficiently is we're going to have two separate battery banks for the boat. So for the motor, sorry. Two separate battery banks for the motor. And what that will allow me to do is use one battery bank down to that 50% mark and then I can switch it over to the other battery bank and I can use that down to the 50% mark. The idea is if I have two banks I can always have one bank that is being recharged or managed by the charging system, by solar or whatever, and I can still be using the other one. Okay, that last 20% is actually the most difficult to get to. And here's the way it works. Without getting too technical, I'm just going to throw this out here. When a battery is discharged and you start to recharge it, it will suck a lot of amperage in really fast and the battery will start to recharge really fast. It'll get up to about 80, 82, 83% of its full charge, sucking up a lot of amperage really fast. And then what happens is the battery quits drawing that much amperage. It, it only draws like 10% of that much. And so the amount of time it takes to go from your discharge state to the 85% might be two hours. The amount of time it takes the battery to go from that 82-83% up to the 100% might be another two hours. But it's drawing so much less energy that what happens is if, you're, if, if people are charging these like with a generator, they're just burning fuel and the generator is not being efficient because it wants to put out a whole bunch of power but the batteries are just like barely sucking anything off that generator and so you waste a lot of fuel. So people have a tendency to just shut the generator off because well 80% is good enough. That's as, that's as high as I could get it that quick. And so that last 15 to 20 percent of that battery can actually be expensive to get back into the battery if you're using fossil fuel like a generator. That is where the solar and the wind generation can really come in and really be helpful because they just run and they don't need to put out a whole bunch of energy, they just need to put out enough to make that battery happy over time. So over that two or three hours, 
the solar or the wind generator can create that energy to bring these back up to their full charge. So that is the whole plan and that is the whole idea of what we're accomplishing with our boat and with the two battery banks is to allow them that time on something other than a generator to get back up to that full charge. Okay, so if you have any questions, feel free to comment down below. I'll try to answer those questions. Uh, we'll probably throw a link somewhere up here for the first video talking about our sailboat motor that, that we talked about and uh, how that's going to work and operate so you can kind of see that. But feel free to give us a thumbs up, like, and subscribe. See you later.